So first of all, I would like to thank Vinshine Audio for sending this unit out for my review. So I definitely will leave a link down in the description below so that you can check out all their R2R ladder DACs. But if you end up liking this DAC and you want to pick it up on Amazon, I will leave an affiliate link for that down in the description below. So first of all, you get this nice little card here. It just has a link to the user guide and driver download. Now it's important that you download the latest driver for this DAC if you're on Windows, if you're on Mac or Linux. It is a driverless setup. And you do have a power cable here on the side. And it looks just like your standard power cable that you would use to hook up your PC. Very uh, straightforward there. Okay, now for the RS2, the first thing that you'll notice is the size of the RS2. I will open it up so you guys can take a look. But first, let's take a look at the unit itself. So wow, guys, the first thing I notice is that the RS2 is heavy. And that's because there's a lot of impressive circuitry inside so this is gonna make it so that your music sounds the best that it could. And the other thing, of course, is the size of this unit. Comparing the Denifrips DAC to this iFi DAC right here, they both accomplish the same thing, but the Denifrips has an R2R ladder circuit, as I mentioned earlier, and that involves using expensive resistors because with R2R DACs, the resistors have to be matched appropriately, otherwise, you're not gonna be able to achieve the digital analog conversion without some loss of audio. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and open the Denifrips DAC here and show you guys the inside before we get into anything else. All right, so let's go ahead and open this up. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the three screws on this side and this side, and that's gonna go ahead and allow us to slide the top cover right off. A quick note that when you're starting to unscrew it, it does take a little bit of force uh, downward and unscrewing it before it's able to turn the screw, so just keep that in mind. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over and slide the cover off. Oh, it looks like we need to take out one more screw right here. Okay, in this position is actually good to go ahead and slide the cover up. Go ahead and just slide, slide, slide. And you can kind of use these feet here to help you slide it out. Give it a good wiggle, and there we go. All right, let's zoom in and see what we have here. Again, this stack uses high quality components, and the very first thing you notice here that stands out is this toroidal transformer. It's like a huge donut and it takes up quite a bit of the area here. And next on the right side, you just see rows and rows of these capacitors here. And over here on the top, we have what looks like the discrete resistor ladders and you have two sets. They look pretty much identical, one on the top and one on the middle here. And one is probably dedicated to the right audio channel while the other one's dedicated to the left audio channel. And here we have a circuit board that takes care of the input power. And what we have here is a little daughter board that takes care of the USB input. And this board right here up to right here takes care of the inputs. These are the two coax inputs and the bottom are the optical toss link inputs. So again, from the left side of this blue stick are the digital inputs and on the right side you have the analog outputs, uh, starting with the RCA outs, and finally the XLR output. So while the Denifrips RS2 has a very impressive circuit board, and you get to see all the high quality components in it. Now since I have this open, let me tell you a little bit more about the RS2 deck and the R2R ladder resistors that makes this special. So the RS2 supports up to 24 bit audio, 1536 kilohertz on PCM, and for DSD, it supports all the way up to DSD 1024. So an important thing to note about R2R ladder DACs is that when you measure them and compare them against Delta Sigma DACs, they don't look very good on paper, but that's why you have to listen to them. You see, one of the important things that you won't see on diagrams is the time domain, and that's where the RS2 shines. So the sound of an R2R DAC compared to a Delta Sigma DAC is that R2R DACs are often filled with emotion, comfort, high fidelity, transparency, and musicality. And these are things that are hard to measure. So you really have to sit down and listen to your music with this DAC to really tell the difference between this and other Delta Sigma DACs and not just look at what looks good on paper. So to achieve this high quality sound, the R2R ladder DAC circuit is used. And because of the way the circuit works, you have to use ultra precise resistors and that's where the cost of the RS2 comes in and that these resistors have to be stringently measured and matched and they require human intervention to cross check to make sure that they are matched properly. So the manufacturing process does come in at a higher cost with an R2R DAC versus a Delta Sigma DAC. 
So just keep that in mind. So each audio channel is decoded by four sets of R2R network. So this produces a design that has a very small linear error, high decoding speed, low digital noise, and ensures that you have low distortion, but also that you have very low background music noise, which is important while listening to your music. You don't wanna hear any static or anything like that. And a lot of people who have listened to this describe it like listening to music with a dark background. It's just silent, you know, just no background noise there. So one cool thing about the Iris 2 is that the power supply is built in. So it's actually in the enclosure and all you need is a power cable to give it power. So they designed the power supply to be low noise, which is great. And one thing that which I found surprising is that they do include a field programmable gate array, also known as FPGA chip, uh, that takes care of the digital signal processing. I was surprised to see that. So typically that adds an extra expense to the DAC. And it's cool that they have this in here. And one cool thing about FPGAs is that you can upgrade them via firmware. Okay, and for the USB input, they use a proprietary USB audio solution via the STM32F446 Advanced AMR based microcontroller unit. And for the USB driver, they use a license, the Sycon USB driver for Windows platform. Again, for Mac and Linux, it's driverless. Now for DSD audio, it supports DSD64 using DSD over PCM protocol on all the inputs. And it supports DSD 1024 using the USB input. As far as PCM, it supports 24 bit audio up to 194 kilohertz on all inputs. But if you use the USB input, you're gonna go ahead and go up to 1,536 kilohertz using that input. And a few other things about the RS2 is that the power consumption is less than 20 watts. The frequency response goes from 20 to 70 kilohertz. The signal to noise ratio is 115 dB. All right, so now I'm gonna close it back up and talk to you guys about the different inputs, outputs, and all the different options and features that this RS2 DAC has. So if you're wondering about the dimensions of the RS2 DAC, it comes in at 215 millimeters by 230 millimeters by 45 millimeters in inches. That comes to about 8.5 inches by 9 inches by almost 2 inches high. And the weight, as I mentioned, is quite heavy. It comes in at 3.5 kilograms or 7.7 .7 pounds. Quite a heavy big boy here. And this only comes in black. And it does come with a three-year warranty. All right, so here is the top of the Denifrips Aris 2 DAC. And in the bottom of the unit here, the first thing you notice is these kind of tall cone-like feet at the bottom that uh, kind of have like a retro look to them. If you have kind of like old vintage uh, stereo equipment, stuff like that, you'll see this kind of feet, which is kind of interesting. You also see some of the connectors in the back. And you see a switch here, uh, the red switch there, to convert from either uh, 115 or 220 power, depending on where you are in the world. And there is some kind of screw here, not sure what it's for, but that'll be for another time. And this is what the side of the unit looks like. As you see, uh, the feet are pretty prominent. They're gonna prop up your Aris 2 up quite a bit, which is gonna avoid a lot of dust, which is a good thing. So let's go ahead and flip it over to the back and take a look at all the inputs and outputs. So first of all, let's start on the right-hand side. So on the right-hand side, you have the connection for the power cable. Then you have the on-off switch. Next to that, you have the USB input, which is what you'll wanna use to get the best quality audio. Next to that, you have two optical toss link inputs, and then you have two coax inputs as well. And again, these are all digital inputs. Now to the left, you will see the analog outputs. And of course you have the left and right RCA connectors for your RCA cables. And then you have a balance left and right for your XLR cables. And that pretty much does it for the back. And here is the front, and the front has a very a retro look. Uh, you know, I've been going through a lot of like old, old uh, like VCRs and, and other like equipment uh, from like the 80s and so on. This definitely has a look of that. It does have that vintage look, which may appeal to some people and may not appeal to some that want a more modern look. But you do have this power and standby power button. It sounds very good when you uh, press it. Of course, you have the Denifrips logo and Aris 2, which is the model of this DAC. And to the right, you have just a bunch of uh, 
LEDs here and a bunch of labels. It's kind of confusing, but uh, you're gonna get to read the manual. It wasn't included with the uh, box that I got, but you do have a download link where you can download the manual. And it's gonna tell you all about the different options you can do here that are available. Different LEDs will light up depending if you have USB connected, if you're playing DSD, what the sampling rate is and so on. So some of the things that you can control on the Aris 2 is that you can use oversampling or you can use non-oversampling mode. And depending on you and your taste, you can decide on that. Traditionalists will go with the non-oversampling. If you want more processed audio output, you could try the oversampling that might sharpen things a bit. But again, those that want the closest thing to the original audio source will stick to the non-oversampling. And then you have a filter between slow and sharp. So those are the two options, slow and sharp. So you'll just have to try those out and see uh, which one sounds better to you and go with the one that sounds better. It just depends on the music you listen to and your particular taste. Now going back to the connectors in the back, I did want to mention uh, the analog outputs. The RCA outputs are going to come out at 2.0 volts RMS at 625 ohms, whereas the XLR connections are going to output at 4 volt RMS at 1250 ohms. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and listen to this and I hope that all those audio reviewers that praise this were right. So I'm gonna come right back with my impression of the Aris 2 DAC while listening to some music and other things and give you guys my impressions of it and let you guys know my final thoughts. So wow, I can't believe you guys have made it this far to the sound portion of this review for the Denafrips Aris 2 DAC. So over the past couple of months, I've been using the Aris 2 DAC along with the THX AAA 789 amplifier, which I think is a great pairing for this DAC. Now, as far as headphones go, for dynamic headphones, I use the Bayer Dynamic DT1990 Pros. And for planar magnetic headphones, I use the Odyssey LCD2C. I did use other headphones other than these, but these were the ones I used primarily when I did most of my music listening with the Iris 2. All right, so let me share with you my thoughts on the sound quality of the Iris 2. Now, it's important to talk about the different modes available with the Iris 2. One is the no oversampling and one is the oversampling. Now, I tried both and I found that I liked the oversampling a lot more than I did the non oversampling. The non oversampling was good. I just felt that with the oversampling mode, Things just sounded a lot sharper. I really liked how it sounded. It was really crisp, especially the treble region was just like super, super crisp. And also felt that the dynamic range between the lowest deep bass and the highest sharp treble uh, was quite more expanded with the oversampling. So I would really hear those tiny little details in the treble as well as kind of feel the rumble with the bass. So most of my experience with listening to the Denifrips Aris 2 was in oversampling mode. Now, if you enable oversampling mode, you get to pick between two filters, the slow filter and the sharp filter. So with the slow filter, I felt like the music was more relaxed. It was more kind of like subtle. Whereas with the sharp filter, which is the one I preferred, things sounded a little bit punchier and it had a little bit more impact with the sound. So I ended up using a sharp filter. It was just like the best for me. If you like a more relaxed sound, I definitely suggest you go with the slow filter. So if you ask me what my recommendation is, if you do get the Aris 2, is that you go with the oversampling sharp filter. I think that was like the absolute best for me. And when it came to oversampling versus the non-oversampling, things just sounded way, way better for me with oversampling.